opposition to the extreme MAGA Republican effort to default on our debt, crash the economy, and trigger a job-killing recession. From the very beginning of this Congress, House Democrats have been focused on putting people over politics. Lower costs, better paying jobs, safer communities, fighting for reproductive freedom, defending democracy, ensuring an economy that works for everyday Americans. People over politics. And we've made clear from the very beginning that we're willing to find common ground with the other side of the aisle for the good of the American people whenever and wherever possible. But we've also made clear that we will fight extremism whenever necessary. And so we are here on the floor today because this default crisis is before the American people as a result of extreme MAGA Republicans making the political calculation that they will benefit in 2024 if they crash the economy, if America defaults, if we fail to pay our bills, if millions of people are made to suffer. Not our words. Those are the words of former President Donald Trump, the words of the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, the words of extreme MAGA Republicans at the very far right of their conference, a political calculation that we're going to take hostages, the American people, the economy, and threaten to crash the economy, hurt these hostages if necessary, or extract painful cuts, painful cuts to our veterans, to disabled children on Medicaid, to people who rely on nutrition assistance, including our veterans, to children, to teachers, to public safety, and of course to our military families. These are the stakes that are before the American people. That's why House Democrats are here on the floor fighting. How do we know that the other side of the aisle has made the determination that they are willing to default on our debt to crash the economy? is because this default crisis is before the American people. On June 1st, America may run out of the ability to pay our bills, and extreme MAGA Republicans have chosen to get out of town before sundown. Good evening, friends. So things are changing. The federal government just announced that applications for unemployment benefits are on the rise. Democrats, including Senator Chuck Schumer, are pushing for the approval of a new bill. This bill would prevent prices of basic necessities from surging even more. My dearest friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video for the latest information. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, friends, all you have to do is click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Officials have reported that applications for jobless claims rose slightly last week, but remains at healthy levels, with many companies hesitant to let go of employees in a tight labor market. The Labor Department reported that the number of Americans filing for jobless claims for the week ending May 20th rose by 4,000 to 229,000 from the week before. Since the crisis led to the loss of millions of jobs three years ago, the U.S. economy has added jobs at a healthy pace and Americans have enjoyed unusual job security. That is despite interest rates that have been rising for more than a year and fears of a looming recession. Earlier this month, the Fed raised its benchmark lending rate for the 10th time in a row in its bid to cool the economy and to bring down four-decade high inflation. Though the labor market still favors workers, there have been some recent indications that the Fed's policy actions are finally working. In April, U.S. employers added a healthy 253,000 jobs, and the unemployment rate dipped to 3.4%.
matching a 54-year low. The Fed is hoping to achieve a so-called soft landing, lowering growth just enough to bring inflation under control without causing a recession. Economists are skeptical, with many expecting the U.S. to enter a recession later this year. Markets are hoping that the Fed hits pause on its rate hikes at its next meeting. Minutes from the Fed's latest meeting show that the Fed officials were split on whether to raise its benchmark borrowing rate. Recently, there have been an increasing number of high-profile layoffs, mostly in the technology sector, where many companies now acknowledge overhiring during the crisis. Microsoft, Lyft, Twitter, DoorDash, and Meta have all announced layoffs in recent months. But it's not just the tech sectors that are trimming staff. McDonald's and Morgan Stanley have also announced layoffs. The SNAP program is working to reassert its commitment to protecting taxpayer money. The program, which would garner the largest portion of the 2023 Farm Bill, is under scrutiny. As lawmakers in Washington, D.C. deliberate how this money should be allocated, lawmakers opposed to SNAP getting such a huge cut of the Farm Bill often argue that the work requirements to qualify for the program are too lax. So it will be up to lawmakers to determine if these measures are sufficient or if more regulation on the SNAP program should be implemented in order to secure its funding. The Limit, Save, Grow Act of 2023, the Republicans' debt ceiling bill, would increase the age requirements of SNAP benefits from under 50 years old to 56 years old. And because of this, 900,000 people in the United States age 50 to 55 are at great risk of losing SNAP benefits. The 2018 Farm Bill will also expire this September, and dairy farmers and consumers have started to worry about how this can negatively impact them if the bill does not pass. One of the main goals of the bill is to keep prices fair for farmers and shoppers. So if the bill is not passed, it could be an expensive trip to the supermarket. Not only would milk prices go up, but so would other dairy products. For the bill to be authorized, it needs to be debated, passed by Congress, and get President Biden's signature. Once the bill expires, so will some of its programs, which will include commodity programs. The first farm bill came into the 1930s as part of President Roosevelt's New Deal in response to the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. And since then, Congress has enacted a bill every five years. The 2018 Farm Bill is the 18th one enacted by Congress. And if a new one is not passed, it could hugely impact dairy farmers. The state of New York is the fourth largest producer of milk in the country. And Senator Chuck Schumer said, Central New York is a big reason for that. Senator Schumer also said the bill has good bipartisan support, but also stated they need to make this a major push federally to get the bill passed. Well, my most beautiful and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you so much, friends, for being here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, friends, of winning the giveaways. 